Oh, damn. So for those of you just joining in, this is a this is the first match of the second day. We got Renegade versus uh, Save Us right now on Constantopolis with the Renegade attacking. Just an update on what's happened. Save Us uh, apparently couldn't get all of their members together right now, so they're playing on. They only have 13 members right now, so as you can see at the top, only a maximum of 13 members for Save Us. Renegade were a nice enough team to allow Save Us to get as many players as they could by waiting. I mean, we waited roughly around 40 minutes for this match to start. Surprisingly enough, Wraith King versus uh, maybe uh, Maybet TV. Oof! Almighty J uh, JV takes out Elusive. Uh, Blah. Not good with names. With a massive retreat from Save Us. There hasn't actually been any fight. I think the first uh, the first kill did go to Save Us. But it's going to be a steep hill to pull back a win. Mainly because an absolute advantage of two heroes is going to be... The, um, the massive mountain that Save Us is going to have to climb. With the quality of troops going to be in question. Again, 700 leadership, or in this case, 1400 leadership down for the defenders. Renegade not going to brute force with their sheer numbers right now. Just going to bombard the bejesus out of this Fort Russia here. One loyal guard pushing up through. Down goes the Port of Russia. Now with the Port of Russia taking out these Pavis are undefended. Chasing after those Pavis in quick order. Doesn't instantly brace on top of them, strangely enough. Alright, Pagoda is running in. Save us. Does seem to not have any reinforcing troops right now. Where are you at? Some Port of Russia is coming in from the right hand side. Too close, no supporting units. Both a Fort of Russia and a Loyal Guard getting absolutely smashed by a Imperial Pike right now. Imperial Akabuz, yes, I did not see those. Metallators are finishing off the Loyal Guards as the rest of the team moves on. Nafan Guards also being killed here. Very high leadership unit. Taken out too easily. Very upsetting. For some reason, these Imperial Spear Guard have decided to face the wrong direction. Get back to the fight. Yep, these Imperial Spear Guards were facing the wrong direction. Now wouldn't been put in attack mode. Whoa, this flank here by a hundred humans. You can see it coming from a mile away, but it does seem to not be as effective as I thought it would be. Doing its best to distract the enemy. Hundred humans just forcing their way through. But the sh short sword will go down in quick order. We got some royal janissaries moving up with uh, Pock, I believe, and some loyal guards also running up, losing almost 300 units for save us to a about 150 units for renegade. Not looking good for the defenders, but it didn't look good at the beginning either. Hopefully. They woke up. Is it that late? I'm 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 supposed to think that it's supposed to be like 8 p.m. for them right now, or like almost 9 for them. I'm surprised I'm surprised that they slept early. This door will go down soon. The Metallators are working on it, and is the sh uh, so is the Short Sword. We've got some fight happening down south, by the looks of it. Or maybe not. Some Tribs, in fact, coming in. 
second stage mortaring. A couple of mortars have now been deployed. I think that, wow, that is, that was the first trip of the game. Don't think it hit very much, though. With 14 minutes to go, it's going to be a tall order for Save Us. Some Nam cans on the field. Always, always interested to see how effective archers can be. But Nam cans, realistically, again, you can just. Uh, well, with most ranged units, you can realistically just rush them. The only problem is, is if the team with the ranged units can't defend them. Ranged units are quite powerful, as, again, their range is the main factor you want to watch out for. Units such as pikes will be susceptible to ranged units. So you always have to be careful not to get shot to death when you're playing pikes. Interested to see how many shields are around. Lots of mortar shots coming in. No short swords, I mean no long swords to heal up the damage. So definitely gonna take some wounds here. Even if they don't die, the damage itself is critical. And since these guys are, not, are standing their ground, every hit from a mortar is going to be pretty devastating. I'm going to drop that combat effectiveness down. Alp Hamity is just charging right on through. Getting eaten up, though, by Janissary Fire. Janissary Harkopeteer is a very interesting unit. Not very commonly seen. This loyal guard on the left-hand side of the south, um, south entrance is going to be very difficult to dislodge very small corridor. There's some Nafan guards going to try to take it out. Nafan guards of save us as well. They're trying to wrap around, but it doesn't look to be successful. Puck going in with his Royal Janissaries. Royal Janissaries uh, stopped for some reason. The Metallator is ta taking part shots at the uh, Royal Janissaries, but the left-hand side uh, pushes in finally. Ru we got Imperial Pikes rushing forward for those Huckabateers. Huckabateer is now being slaughtered. Again, rain getting close to ranged units is the key. They're very weak to melee, or just uh, weak in general. Sus is down to 10 players. Two more go down in quick order, or just one. A stack of Pavis and Fortabrasha is in the back here, shooting down the Imperial Pikes. But Imperial Pikes' bottom line have 20% resistance to range damage, and there goes the win for Renegade. Unfortunately for uh, Save Us, not having the full team uh, of 15 was too much to ask to hold the defense. Unfortunate. Renegade wins the first match. Let's hope. Uh, save us can get their two more players before the next round starts otherwise it's going to be an easy hold for Renegade it'd be very very difficult to ask an attacking team with less players to win but I've seen it happen before not in a tournament though <laughs> I got crazy Skippy here going, can we make up our own teams for the stream? Suspicious versus Morning Rigid and Impotence versus Lowly Lickers. I mean, like, their official name is um, Lowly uh, lovers. Really funny. <laughs> I 
All right, we're just going to have to wait for the next set of matches to begin for uh, Save Us versus Renegade. That's a sus name. Sus indeed. <laughs> Save us. Save us from the renegades. That's the, that's what's really happening here. Save us. The 13 players are held hostage. They have to fight so that renegade looks better. So I'm listening to the dev stream right now, and they're saying that the Asia division absolutely hates playing on Constantinopolis and Valley Fortress, mainly because, uh, well, Constantinopolis in particular, because it's a infantry heavy map, and no one, not no one on the AP wants to go infantry heavy when you can run everything down with cavalry. But it's it's just it's just common to see that easier maps, more simpler maps to say are just easier to deal with. Constantinopolis being complex at the same time it, it, it's complex at the same time it's um, restrictive because the ways to get in a oh yeah no for sure this season alone being infantry focused is not a bad thing but I mean, like, um, well, I'm not sure. It's just, it's just a infantry heavy season, honestly. So yeah, cavalry has been pushed to the backside. I mean, days gone when you just have like 15 hussars or like more than half of your leadership being made up of just cavalry. Now we only have uh, small contingents, probably roughly around. Uh, I've seen I've seen as many I've seen as many as fifteen cavalry being used by the uh, one or uh, one of the teams, but realistically, it's kind of been boiled down to around about seven or five maximum.
between there, five or seven. It's five to seven. <laughs> Devs going through adjustments about um, about the maps. The biggest adjustments about the maps I've seen is the Angolia map getting a supply point up on the north side. That's probably the biggest change of any of the maps I've seen. Also, they tried to balance Daiso Fort by putting the supply point on the uh, in the middle section on the ground in different places. They kind of shifted it to the center of, um, to the center, then shifted it back to the left side. I guess it was uh, too biased for the defenders or for the attackers. I'm not sure. The data don't actually have access to that data. I said it used to be popular, now Vodafone is more popular. Oh, the next battle is about to begin! We have Zavos attacking Renegade on Valley Fortress. Be very interested to see if they have a full 15 right now. Otherwise, it's going to be a tall order for Zavos to beat Renegade out in a, uh, let's say, subpar attack. Unfortunately, it does not look like they've got the two extra players, but I do commend Save Us for playing on Eve regardless of the number of players. Let's hope they put up a good fight. Otherwise, I mean, like, Renegade could literally just run out of the uh, defending, um, run out through the front gate and just slaughter Save Us. <laughs> Hope you enjoy the bundles. And this is why normal. This is why, like, you always need roughly around 
twice the number of attackers than defenders. Historically, I mean. To stop the defenders from sallying out and just slaughtering your guys. Because honestly, if it was equal numbers, normally the defenders would just like, again, meet them on the field, like meet them outside. No point in waiting. Castles, forts, or like defensible positions or force multipliers. So a smaller force will probably like, I don't know. You can have as, you could probably have a number difference of probably around five times the amount, and you could probably still win. I'm probably sure there's probably uh, some examples in history of legendary defenses where they're severely outnumbered. That's the defender's advantage. I'm not sure how that translates in game. Attackers do have a lot of tools at their disposal. We got two artilleries, uh, two artilleries each, and one treb each. Let's see how fast they can take out these first uh, natural spawn artilleries. Does look like a lot of the ones on the right hand side are gone. Left hand side culverins are still up by the looks of it. Only a couple, I think. The ones at the back also going to be a difficult. Uh, difficult to take out. Ones on the forward wall do get taken out. Left and uh, right, ah, middle and right siege towers are making their way down towards the wall. And after all of this, I probably need to take a shower. It is too early this morning. Normally, any, normally I only wake up. Whoa, we got some javelins being thrown up. Almighty JB throwing some javelins. Nice to see some of these uh, other units being deployed. But whether or not they're going to make a difference, it's going to be a while since we... Well, let's see if we can keep an eye on it. Javelins have been uh, weaker, I would say, during the season. Mainly due to the fact that damage has been kind of scaled downwards with infantry increasing in health unfortunately range units still keep their relatively low health so they die super fast super fast to a sneeze <laughs> a blow in the wind archers in particular i don't like the fact that the health is roughly around 2000 we got save us stacking heavily on the middle side tower we've got a couple of guys guarding the front gate here comes the first push we've got some Loyal, ah, uh, not loyal guards. No, maybe it's loyal guards. We got some Nafan guards bringing up the rear as well. These Namcans just suppressing the siege tower. Better not stay too long. Shortbow trying to shoot them out. Better off just grabbing one of the muskets and throwing and having them throw a bomb. You can throw a bomb from that distance. Amazingly enough, Almighty JV leading the charge. We've got a volley coming out. Better off just having those sh shields just face the face the oncoming fire and just block for you. Expedition Knights now moving on to the A point from Save Us. This mall is giving them a hard time at the very least. So Vor Russia is finally moving up as well. Taking shots along the way, but Namcans do seem to have stopped firing. Looking to redirect their fire onto a different section. In fact, here comes a Sally out with Tundra Humans. Actually, we have some Monastic Knights in the lead. Half destroying that uh, Loyal Guard, but the Loyal Guard still stands strong. Probably in the wrong direction. Expedition Knights getting wiped by Tundra Humans. We've got some Berserkers and some Imperial Pikes dealing with a different Tundra Human. But Fort of Russia, the Fort of Russia line, Alpha is going to try to charge their way through. Nice setup! We've got Loyal Guards and Alpha is setting up for a epic charge straight into the Fort of Russia Pike heads. But the Nafan Guards are burning down the Fort of, um, are burning down the Loyal Guards and Alpha is in quick order. But the 
second set of photographs and loyal guards in the back are going to be a bit difficult to beat beat through not to mention without support just loyal guards now save us actually grabbing the a point for now excellent job Save us at the A point. Really need some reinforcements. Or oh, I hope they got the Nafan guards out. I didn't see if they went down or not. We've got half a Renegade team moving back towards the C point. Does look like a full retreat for the rest of the guys coming. Not bad. Not bad. We've got... Save us doing very well on the attack right now. But with naturally two down and a unit deficit of roughly around 200 right now. 227. It's going to be it's going to be a little bit difficult to eat through. Each of their assaults need to be unstoppable. They cannot stop. They must always win each engagement. They're stacking pretty heavily on this supply point on the right hand side. Probably waiting for Save Us to make a move and they'll flood on down. I'm pretty sure if they still have the Metallators available, they'll shoot directly down this um, directly down this uh, south side stairs, I would say. Tiger Humans on the patrol. One of the strongest units in the game, if I do say so. Berserker is coming in roughly around second. Again, this is really realistically about how the unit is balanced. I say they're overpowered because you can easily make these units overperform compared to other units. Winged Stars having the best charge in the game it doesn't make them overpowered, it just makes them a one trick pony. But that does not mean their effectiveness is reduced in the slightest. We've got some Metallators. Uh, I believe those are bottom line Guardian mode. They're not the greatest at accuracy, but they're great for uh, general area denial. The only problem is, is that the low accuracy means that people can just rush right through your gunfire. And it's a little bit slower, so you have to actually rely on some of the alpha shots to annihilate a section. Gunpowder units are more effective in volleys. Unfortunately, that uh, the game decides to have gunpowder units shoot basically um, as if they're breech-loading rifles. I honestly think they need to reduce the reduce the fire rate of a lot of ranged units, but compensate by increasing the damage. Also, get rid of the Namcan's uh, bleed, or at least make it less com um, less annoying to deal with. Does look like Save Us doesn't have a plan just yet. I'm going to look at some... These muskets definitely being super annoying for these loyal guards. I'm not sure if anyone died just yet, but taking a lot of damage at the very least. Very common to see that south side stairs are normally impossible to assault. Left, um, assaults through the left hand side are very common, especially on the Asia servers. <laughs> loyal guards versus loyal guards. Loyal guards doing using bastion. It's, doesn't go all the way through though. What about shares on stairs? are never really um, well. Any pike units on stairs never really do well. They have the trebs. Why not treb these uh, loyal guards right in front of you, at the very least? Even if you can't treb the uh, halberdiers and Nafan guards on the right-hand side. Save us. Not using the tools that they have. we got some trebs coming... I mean, some mortars coming through, at the very least. Nafan guards burning down this left-hand side. Here comes a treb, but it might be too high. I think it's going to hit directly onto the team. Yes, it does! 
two trebs, three trebs, four trebs. It was too high. Friendly fire all around. Uh, save us. Did not position that well. Devastating their own team. Failed attack here. Port of Russia is really need a flat ground in order to make maximum use of their pikes. Forcing their way up the south side stair is probably not the best idea. But at this present time, I don't know what kind of plan you could do with just 13 players. We got Winged Assars going down, crushing the Loyal Guards. And they just go on through. Berserkers trying to catch... Uh, does catch the Winged Assars. In fact, the Winged Assars go down fast. Their own Winged Assars uh, save us going for a push towards that supply point. Those Winged Assars forcing their way through. I'm not sure how well or effective that was going to be. Renegade finally pushing out. We've got Winged Assars running down the stairs. They're actually going to get the C point, fascinatingly enough. But the response from Renegade is going to be hard. Quite a few players are still around. Good work, Glaive. Getting in enough time. We've got the initial charge. Sandra Humans just getting absolutely decimated. Loyal Guard still holding strong. But the second set of Tundra Humans breaches the line. We've got some uh, Renegade's own Loyal Guards moving up now to secure the position. Berserkers in spades right now eating through the infantry of uh, Renegade. I think the Berserkers from Save Us is going to carry the day here at the B point, but massive losses for Save Us. Save Us now moving on to almost 400, um, no, just over 350 unit deficit. These Berserkers are really, uh, it's going to be a, Gonna be a big ask of these Berserkers to perform as best as they can. Berserkers are one of the, uh, again, I would say one of the few units that can easily overperform along with 100 humans. Surprisingly enough, Renegade has retreated back inside the final point. I believe we might be heading to the critical zone already for us. Save us. Save us. Going, not going to have very much left in the tank in terms of unit unit quality. Definitely on the low end. We've got a lot of we got a lot of Pike militia coming out. Berserkers going up. No heroes to support. Berserkers going to have a little bit of difficult time to beat through the I'd say that but they're eating through it fairly easily actually a couple of berserkers already went down those pike militia are trading very efficiently that stun on brace will be super annoying for the berserkers but they do finish it off two berserkers are remaining definitely always need your berserkers to have hero support or at least support Berserkers can easily outperform every single unit, but the problem is, is that they are a, um, essentially a quarter unit. They're essentially a tier 6 unit, but there's only, um, only the size, um, only one fourth the size of any other unit. Getting shot at by Metallators at this entrance points. I think. I think they lost the mortar just now. Direct mortar towards the base point. Not sure if they're gonna get any good shots. They have 10 trebs available to them, but the base point is not exactly the easiest place to treb. Valley Fortress, again. Don't have very many good treb spots at the base point. C point, you got some good treb spot. A point, not so much. B point, you got some really good treb points, in fact. 
but I'm pretty sure, uh, pretty sure at the B point as well, the defending team can get some really good defensive positions. Definitely going to hard point the two entrances that they have to go through. It's going to be a tall order to break through the Fort of Russia's on the left hand side of the south entrance. Some good trebs, I mean, some good mortars coming in onto this uh, backside door. Another treb smashing. Every kill is a win. Quite a few of them actually have died. Means that they've taken at least more than five shots. We got some climbs from Save Us, but the glaive goes instantly down. Wraith King is trying to kill this Jewel Blade. Jewel Blade. Oh, wait, no, Wraith King is not there. Jewel Blade tackles Carl with Death Mark, but it doesn't seem to be effective. Namcan's climbing. Or no, Berserker's climbing. Does look to be trapped in the climbing animation right now. They're trying to get dominance on the wall. Maybe a good strategy, but not going to be effective. Here comes these Imperial Javelineers again. Getting shot to pieces, though. Not a good... Not a good thing if you're just going to let them go, but maybe we got some permadeath around. Have been seeing Save Us getting taken out quite often. Three minutes to go. Save Us. Hopefully you do well. This will be your one and only push. Every unit down is a unit... Um, is a massive loss. We only have 400 units to go. Imperial Pikes coming in from the rear for these... How many sergeants? Another fire pot. They really need to take that out. Here comes a point blank charge from palace guards eating the imperial uh, imperial pikemen up. Some iron pagodas moving in. More imperial pikes moving up. These are bottom line. Uh, these are bottom line imperial pikes. So does sound like the my cleaners are here. Might get a little bit noisy. Hopefully it doesn't interfere too much. Bye! Renegade Breadfan does lead the game. Hopefully he comes back quickly. His team might need him, but does not look like Save Us is gaining any advantages here. Finally using their artillery, we've got a cannon, a ballista, and a grape shot here at the front gate. I say finally using their artillery, but like, they've been using mortars. I'd, I'd like to see other artillery around. Pavis on the wall. Again, a strange... Um, I haven't seen Pavis in the tournament that often, but save us trying to make good use of these Pavis. I say Pavis are not that... Uh, it's not as strong as you think they would be. Really, you need that double shot to make them really go crazy. In all due respect, without Doctrines, Pavis are quite balanced the way they are. But that's also with the reduced health. Cannon shots on the main line. We've got our Pavadiers coming in from Save Us. We've got 50 seconds left. They have 30 seconds to clear the uh, base point of Renegade. Finally making the final move, the Hakabati is getting sliced up in the back. We've got a rear charge by Winged Asars. Gonna f uh, Renegade's probably just going to clean up the remaining players from Save Us, securing their victory 2-0. Two, two, I don't believe with six players left, Save Us can win the day. 20 seconds have already... Um, 20 sec less than 20 seconds means that the base point can no longer be capped. I congratulate Renegade. But Save Us are doing very well, actually pushing Renegade back to the base point, even though they are two players down. Yes, Azura, I do also agree, without the 25% increased fire rate from the Doctrines, they're not that good. Not as good as some of the other units who don't need to rely on Doctrines in order to be the best units. Wing Desires being quite still effective even without doctrines uh you got the tundra humans 
berserkers, iron reapers, royal janissaries, Atalator like a lot of a lot of the like a lot of the one-off units. Metalators, Nafan Guards, both 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 types of units don't actually have very good doctrines, but really good by default. Javelins, I'm actually I'm actually thinking javelins are pretty much worthless in the tournament setting because one of their main issues is shield units, and without the 200 um, without the 200 block break damage, they can't really beat um, they can't really do that much damage. With javelins, javelins only doing around about three thousand, um, three thousand damage a hit, and probably only around about four thousand, five thousand damage in like critical, like rear hits as well. Considering the low ammo for javelins, yeah, just not gonna. A lot of units just not gonna perform very well in a tournament setting. Really need the, uh, really need the full setup of doctrines. In order to make them better, but it's, it it would be good to see if they do a, a doctrine overhaul. I would love to see um, the doctrines to be more standardized to the point of thing. Hi, I'm just streaming right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it will last for about another hour. So then I'll go off. We gotta see the pick ban for Imperium and Lowly Lover. Wallfort getting banned out by Imperium. Very interesting to see that Lowly Lover banning out Ongolia. Ongolia normally extremely difficult for attackers. But maybe Imperium just specializes in Ongolia. I've I've seen very terrible attacks on Ongolia, and honestly, I've never I I don't in a tournament setting it would be even more difficult. Imperium choosing Harbor City, very um used to be very common. High Long Cured coming out from a lowly lover. Let's see if both teams um let's see how well both teams defend each of the maps. Lowly Lover, probably, again, probably infantry heavy, just from the prediction. Normally, because Harbor City is cab-friendly and High Long Fjord not so cab-friendly, well, let's see if Imperium decides to bring quite a more cavalry than any of the teams from South America. Hopefully, the match will begin soon.
Here we go. Next set of matches beginning. Harbor City. First, we have Imperium attack a Hobby City with Lolly Lava defending. Can't wait to see what the. We got a, quite a few longbows. Whoa, Lolly Lava also down a couple of guys. This will be. I don't know. I think Lolly Lava's got a chance on Harbor City if they commit to a full on uh, defense of the wall. They can get, definitely get it. I hope that works out. I'm trying to use noise suppression. Tell me if you guys can still hear the vacuum cleaner in the background. Imperium instantly trebbing the left hand um... Bastion? No. I'm not sure what to call it. I'm gonna say Bastion. Actually missing! Just getting the uh Ballista, in fact. Number one! Hello, how we These showers are making their way towards the wall. Left hand side, about to see a breakthrough. We've got three guys holding. Pedro, Astrid, and Zane holding off uh, Asa Loki and Asa Log. Asa Log? Doesn't look like these siege towers are going down anytime soon. Down goes, whoa, down goes the left one and down goes the right side one. May have spoke too soon about them not going down. The middle side one does look like it's making its way there. They treb a culprit. Down. down goes the middle side tower. Good job. First generation, all of the first generation siege towers are down. Takes quite a few minutes. Uh, take take a minute for these things to get back up, and also to make it across the wall. Indeed. Still got this watcher in play as well. For um. Natural spawns are normally taken out fairly easily. Every shot you can get off of these things are great resources for the defenders. Another treb onto these Metallators. Metallators just deciding to stick it out. I think most of the squad does get taken out. Very unfortunate. The, three, the 3v3 here on the left hand side is a full on stalemate with just the longsword and Musket probably exchanging blows and heals.
Middle Science Station are about to make it, in fact. But with only one siege tower, Lully Lover still has the advantage. But without units up on the wall, ready to go, I think um, Imperium can just rush up and destroy the defending teams. We got some Pike Militia coming in to defend right now. Eight minutes to go. This is the critical moment. This is where it could all kick off. Bad move, I would say. Don't fight them on the siege tower, especially when you're considering considering that you can't force multiplier. Those Imperial Pikes just march on through. Here comes some loyal guard. Just going to slaughter the Pike Militia. Pike Militia are not going to do any good here. Shield units in spades just smashes right through the defending team. Imperium seems to be going to get A in A in their first go very easily. A light defense, if I do say so. Lolly Lover. Losing one of their biggest advantages now is going to be a much more difficult task. We've got 300 unit difference amazingly actually creeping on to f almost 400 in terms of just units i think imperium is going going to just crush them in <laughs> but taking the safe approach imperium now going to start their mortaring here on the right hand side Imperium just going, just, wow, did I miss something? I think I did. Wing Star just smashing right through the defending team right now, those loyal guards, but, oh, I would say those Imperial Pikes are catching those, um, those Wing Stars, but it does not look like it. The reinforcing, I think they actually just got stuck. They were not marching down the stairs. They were actually just getting marching into a wall just now. Lolly Lover just continuously retreating. Throwing out one Imperial Pike march at a time. Here comes a Winged Asar. Actually pulls off, strangely enough. Hedro not going for the charge down range. Could have been a good charge, in fact. We got quite a few tar good juicy targets that are not good at dealing with Winged Asars and Cavalry Chargers in general. But the infantry line does look strong. We got some winged assars and some tundra humans coming out from Imperium. Quite a few cavalry coming out from Lolly Lover as well. Just loyal guards got to hold up the rear, but Imperial Pike's also ready here. Are they going to swing right around? You got to make a move. Eight minutes to go, and they've already started the initial attack. One of their short swords getting grabbed by a mole and instantly deleted by the loyal guards. Here comes the winged assault charge, deleting that um, that loyal guard. Oof. Winged assault charge coming in from Lolly Lover does get mostly stopped. The rear battle has also kicked off. Northern Lands Cavalry trying to punch their way through Imperial Pikes, but not doing as well as they used to. Tundra humans versus. Uh, Northern Lands Cavalry in the back as well. 
but the main battle on the base point is all that matters. Loyal guards pushing up, beating out every single other uh, infantry on on the base point. Berserkers are not going to be able to change the battlefield. We've got some more Imperial Pikes. Some Metallators are shooting a little bit too high now, right now. Berserkers are amazingly eating through one of the Imperial Pikes. I mean, one of the Loyal Guards. This Winkers Archer is going to meet the Pike end of an Imperial Pike march. Strangely enough, those are not veteran uh, completely on top or bottom. Maybe a mix. Imperial Pikes did run out of their Imperial Pike march. Getting smashed by some Mortifier. But that Treb may have cancelled them out. Doing very well. Lottie Lover just fighting on. Throwing unit after unit at the attacking team. Grape shots coming out for the Imper uh, for Imperium. We're down to just eight heroes. I think the short swords have seen better days. Quarter Rashio at the front with some loyal guards. More loyal guards creeping up, eating it heavily. Couple of remainder. Um, couple remaining. Winged Asars are trying to loop around, but this longbow might go down before he can get a charge off. He does charge them, but straight into a wall. Very ineffectual. More Trebs coming in. This longbow not being dealt with right now. It does look like they did take out the uh, grape shots. That would, go, uh, that would be very difficult for them to handle. Bam! Down goes that longbow. That longbow has been taken out. Have recovered. We've had almost three minutes of fighting, 500 units dying for the defenders, and probably 300 units or more than 400 units dying for the attackers. A lot of cavalry dead. Definitely, definitely um, massive for every dead teammate. And even if you're down default. But what is impressive that even down two players, Lottie Lover still pulled back that assault. Showing their resilience, but losing out in the exchanges does mean that this next attack may just win on sheer weight alone. Reinforcements is going to be slow, and even if reinforcements do come, it's not going to be anything strong. These Imperial Pikes need to stop um, need to stop throwing themselves out for free. You can still get an Imperial Pike March, and Imperial Pike March doesn't have a hit limit. Down goes those Imperial Pike. A forward defense as well. Classic to see. Make it hard for the attackers. Once they round this corner, they should meet the Pike end of... Uh, or the sharp end of any weapon. Again, these free kills are not good for either side. Metallators have been shifted over. No ranged units in order to take them out. I would get my lock. Two sets of Metallators... I don't, not sure how well this is going to go for the defending team, but it already looks overwhelming. We still have Loyal Guards and Imperial Pikes ready for Imperium. Doesn't look like anything strong coming out from Lolly Lover. Does look like they have just the bare minimum. Imperium also savagely beating up everyone on the backside with Cavalry. These Metallators about to get flanked by Wingdessars. Wingdessars not the greatest in melee. They have the best charge. Oh, we got to miss a main charge down the base point. Three minutes to go. I highly doubt that Lottie Love is going to be able to hold for three minutes, considering that it's completely overrun right now. 200 units have already fallen for the defenders. More units die as we speak. As... Imperium secures the base point, just the dual blade making it difficult. 
first attack going to Imperium. Definitely seems excessive. I mean, having that much resources available to you. I mean, honestly, Imperium could have won on sheer weight of their troops alone. But the surprising thing is, is that Lolly Lover brought it down to three minutes. Three minutes, meaning that if Lolly Lover won, like they won the base exchange, if they could have held the wall a little bit longer, they could have won it. That's the most fascinating thing. They didn't give up. They didn't give up. And I love it when people are resilient like this. Even when a bad situation looks... Well, even if it looks like a bad situation, you make the best of it. I congratulate both teams for participating, but we're going to have to wait. Um, we still have one more match. Maybe, hopefully, two, if it does come down to a field battle. And hopefully, Lolly Lover gets in some extra players. But we'll get to see Heilong Fjord. Going to be a very difficult map for Lolly Lover to attack. Normally, since Heilong Fjord being infantry focused. And, again, kind of getting past A or B is all about infantry. Um, all about mass.
Damn it. Ugh. Huh? Oh, um, this is the South America. This is the South America tournament, so. Um, St. Oz, they're based in South America, so yeah. <laughs> he's either, um, I'm not sure. He normally doesn't do the other tournaments sometimes. I, since I'm doing all, all of the tournaments anyway, he only does the uh, ones at night. So maybe he's doing something else. Or he's studying, as he should be. He's still doing uni right now. And I think he's doing his exams. It, I think it's exam period for him right now as well. All right. We have Lolly Lover attacking Heilong Shord against Imperium. They Imperium did just win their Harbor City assault. So, if they hold the defense, then Imperium will win and will be top 8 of the South America team, um South America division. Otherwise, if Lolly do, Lolly Lava does send it to a tiebreaker. Um, there could be a chance for them. But let's see. With two members down yet again, Lolly Lava does not look to be in a good position at the get-go. But Lolly Lava did an excellent job on their defense. Let's see how well they can do on the attack. A massive stack at B could be an easy rush. Let's see how fast they can break down this door and surprise uh, Imperium. Imperium is stacking pretty heavily on the A side. Does not look like the class has changed too much. We've got two Glaives coming out for Imperium, in fact, which is quite, uh, quite uncommon. Glaives are not very common in the tournament. A triple mall setup for Imperium will break down any shield wall just by themselves. Ooh. Let's see if they spot it. Imperium does switch over to the B side. They did see it. Lottie Lover has already re um, reached the wall. Let's see if they can break it through. But Imperium has already sent all of their guys over to the B side. They've, well, most of their guys to the B side. We've got some guys coming across the wall, Look, does look like. Dumb Teletor is firing at some heroes fighting on top, of the, um, on top of the wall. The climb is real, sending up more and more berserkers, I believe. Outnumbered right now. Those berserkers from Imperium are going to get slaughtered. Here comes the first trap of the game. Onto those Metallators. Let's see. I hope it's a good hit, but I think it might be short. A Berserker Rush relies on mass and capabilities. You gotta have all your capabilities together. Why are you spreading them out? The main mass is already breaking through the wall. 
We got Fort Abrashios and Loyal Guards going for to block off this, uh, let's just say, right hand side. Flamethrowers in the mix as well. Lottie Lava looks strong, actually. I do believe this um, primary defense might have a difficult time breaking through this. An Imperial Pike March does seem to be absolutely ineffective against this uh, good setup. But Metallators are raining down fire. Wingasar is still waiting on these stairs, but the Imperial Pike Marshes from both sides coming out. We've also got Nafan Guards burning down. Wingasars have not been engaged, so they're not going to... Oh, I'm not sure. That would be a good time for the Wingasars to engage. You need to re... You need to reposition those. Nicely done. But does look like the main mass did get defeated. Unfortunately, we were concentrating on the backside masses too much. Cavalry coming out like a tidal wave, absolutely cleaning up the rest of Lottie Lover. Very unfortunate for their primary attack. I think they did very well at the beginning. I think the main line just had insufficient uh, troops, allowing the cavalry to eventually win out once the infantry get worn down. Lovely Lover ready for their next attack. Four minutes to go. Climbing again up onto the wall. They've got a second set of Nafan Guards, I believe. Did see something. Yeah, second set of Nafan Guards. Metalator is raining direct fire into that gateway, though. They're going to eat it as they approach. Not the, not the best start to an attack. Uh, that was a miss. Massive miss. Friendly fire might come in. Luckily, no friendly fires right now. We got some Namcans coming up as well. Shots raining down. Boom, boom. Mortars are coming in. They've now decided to counter... Well, they've now decided to go into mortar style. We're about to hit the three minute mark. It could be... It could be that Lolly Lava will just run out of time by default. They have 800 troops left, but the unit deficit is almost 400 going to be very difficult for Lottie Lover to pull a victory here. Again, when attacking Hylon Fjord, it's all about the strength of your unit. You want to be fast, you want to be mo um, you can't slow down once an attack has begun. Mainly because once your attack gets stopped, you lose all momentum and if you and if you have to sit back and mortar the defending teams a bit, that means you're not strong enough to defeat them. And considering that Hylon Fjord is strapped for time, it's always going to be very difficult. All right. They've realized that they're going to run out of time. They're moving up their infantry lines. But cavalry here on the right-hand side. Cavalry here on the left-hand side. They're going to be surrounded. So they're going to have to do something. Here comes Wingersard in the back. Or friendly Wingersard? No. Those are enemy Wingersard. Wingersard definitely did not charge properly. Grape shot cannons out from the defenders, ready to destroy any hero that gets too wise in order, um, 
that thinks they're none the wiser. Oh, this is a huge bait. Are they trying to go for the A point while going through this A um, B point entrance? Nafan guards at the back. Imperial Pike's gotta get ready. Be ready. Doesn't march in time, or does march in time, but the didn't um, catch all of the cavalry. Getting completely collapsed on from both sides is probably what's happening right now. Winged Stars munching right through those Expedition Knights at the very back. Tundra humans going out of control. Cleaning up the rest. We have some Nafan Guard fire annoying the shit out of the cavalry, but unfortunately that is 300 units lost for Lolly Lover. I do not believe with less than a minute to go, Lolly Lover has any chance of taking Highlong Fjord. I do commend Lolly Lover playing on regardless of the hero disadvantage. But we must congratulate Imperium for winning their elimination round. They are the top eight teams of SA or South America. Down to half a unit, I think. Yeah. Light of Lover still got some troops. Does look like they'll fight to the end. Cavalry charging through. Ooh, does look like that cavalry actually made it halfway through that infantry pile. Not exactly sure what it is, but Lolly Lover still fighting on. And there it is, the end of the game. Very unfortunate for Lolly Lover. Couldn't get a whole team together. I do think I do believe that they did very well. Their coordination does seem to be on point in some circumstances, but just not having enough people. I think it just comes down to not having enough people. If they had 15 people, Lolly Lover could definitely, definitely seem like a strong contender for Imperium. But we're going to have to wait until next time. That's the last we'll see of Lolly Lover for this tournament. We'll see Imperium again in the next stage, but there is four more battles for South America to determine the rest of the top eight. Or two more battles? Probably two more battles, actually. There's only seven battles. I'll have to do a triple. I'll probably do a triple on one day. I gotta check the I gotta check the dates again. But um I believe that is all for the SA tournament. So I hope you guys enjoyed the commentary. Um catch the South Pacific a division later today in approximately 12 hours no 10 hours in approximately 10 hours at 8 we have the south america um, south pacific i mean <gasps> south pacific the asia pacific division tournament um i hope to catch you guys then but that is all for the south america day two catch you back tonight yes thanks almas i'll hope to see you there as well but that is all. I hope to I hope you guys have a good day. I'll see you guys next time. Otherwise, this is Azakai and I am off. Bye.